Hey everyone, so now finally we have a new update video from our good friend Torben Sundergar where I know that there has been many people have been asking but what is the update? What is uh, news about Torben? Is Torben is going to be released or what is going to happen? As you many of you have heard about that the uh, lawyer is helping uh, Torben's case to get him a bond so he can come out of prison, come out of jail and then be with his family. And the last time we heard any updates from Torben was around five, six days ago. So I know that there are many of you have been asking for more information. And now we have more updates on what is actually happening, what is going on. To just make it very short, and Torben is going to explain more uh, about this here on this post. What is actually happening is that the paper was sent in about Torben to get him a bond. But as soon as the papers were sent in, he got rejected. The papers got rejected immediately. In a way that Torben will not get a bond. They refused it. They rejected it. And I will say, guys, it came hard on all of us. And it probably also come as a shock on you. But especially right now, it especially came hard and shocked on Torben and the whole family. And it is really, really not easy right now. And it's really not easy because we don't know what is going on. We don't see the full picture on what God is doing. And that's why, <clears throat> as what Torben says and Lena says, the whole family, the faith are being tested. Because things are going hard and we don't see the full picture. And this is what I just want to say. But at the same time, guys, we need to continue to trust the Lord. As what Torben encouraged, as Lena encouraged, we need to continue to trust the Lord. You know, I said it before and I say it again, Lena, Torben's wife, she always quote this, uh, the same thing. Like, especially us who, who are close with them, who know Lena and Torben, we know that Lena often quote the same thing. And that is why she often say, God is in control. God is in control. God is faithful. And we still believe and we need to still believe that God is still faithful during this process. Even now, right now, as things seem to be hopeless, seems, it seems to be that it didn't go out as it turns to. But we truly need to believe that God is faithful because He is. God is in control because He is. Even though we don't see the full picture. Try to imagine, guys, it is the same way as we look in, for example, in the Old Testament with Joseph. If we live, try to imagine, if we live during the time with Joseph and walk with Joseph here on earth, and if we saw now that Joseph was put into prison, what would we react if we saw that with our physical eyes as we were with Joseph? We will react, oh no, this is catastrophe, this is not good, this is a disaster, everything now is ruined and come to an end. This is probably, we will react if we will see this way, if we were right there right now with Joseph. But now, when we read the story of Joseph, the Bible, in a distance, we often read it with a smile on our face. Why? Because we know how the story ends. We know how God in his faithfulness and mercy, how God is taking Joseph out of the jail and how the breakthrough came and so on. And that is also the same way in the book of Acts with the early church. Try to imagine when the early church was birthed for the very first time, 3,000 people in Jerusalem got saved, got born again, where they repent, got baptized, received the Holy Spirit. And it seems to be things are going well. Things start to be built up. But then suddenly this man called Paul, or his name during that time was Saul, came and persecuted the church, the early church in Jerusalem. And they were scattered. And try to imagine if we lived during that time with the early church and being part of it, and then we see this persecution hit so hard on the early church in Jerusalem, what would we think? What would we react in right there in that moment? I believe we will react the same way. In the way we will often think, oh no, this is disaster. This is the end. This is a complete failure. What is going on? What, what? Like we will feel like uh, our faith will be tested. Why? Because this is what we will experience if, uh, if we live during that time as, as will we see during that time there. But try to imagine, now we read the book of Acts. We read the early church, the Bible in a distance with a smile on our face. Why? Because we know the storyline. When Paul or Saul persecuted the church, 
maybe when we are there, we will see it as a failure, but we don't see it as a failure. Why? Because we see through persecution, it just spread the kingdom of God. It just spread it even more. But we will not see it if we were there because we will not see the full picture. But now we see the full picture and we read the book of Acts with a smile on our face. We know what happened during the hardship, during the trials. God is faithful. God is in control. And this is what we believe, guys, the same way when it comes to Torben right now and the family, what they are going through. Even though we don't see the full picture, we still say and believe God is faithful. God is in control. And I also want to say this, guys. I know that there are many of you who have heard about Torben and also the last reformation negatively, where you have heard many negative about Torben and all of us. And that depends where you have looked. Like if you write the last reformation on Google or on YouTube, then you will find some videos where there's negative, where there's lies and accusation against Torben, against the last reformation, all of us where we have been accused, where we say, where they say it's all up for us, it's all about the money, we taking money, we stealing money. People are saying where it's like we are a false, uh, uh, a cult, we are false uh, Christians, we are a cult, we are dangerous cult, and all these kind of things, all these accusations that are coming in. And that is also the same way right now why Torben's in jail, because of false and lies accusation that uh, somebody brought that Torben had been smuggling weapons from Mexico to United States. And as I said in the other previous video, and I say it again, all these things what's happening with Torben and also the accusation against us, it all comes down because of the work of the kingdom for the sake of the gospel. And I know some people have been reacting and say, no, it's not because for the sake of the gospel, it's because that he probably had been smuggling weapons. And no, it's a lie. It's a lie because I it has did not happen. I was in Mexico. We have never smuggled weapons in. The only thing we brought in Mexico was the gospel. That is the only thing. The gospel of the free that Jesus Christ came to save us, to set us free from our sin, to give us a new life. And this is just part of it. This is just part of life. And there's nothing new under the sun. Why? Because Jesus did say in Matthew chapter 5, verse 11 to 12, and he says this, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and listen to this, and falsely say all kinds of evil. So it's not only they say one kinds of evil, they say all kinds of evil against you because of me, Jesus said. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecute the prophets who were before you. Guys, come on. This is what Jesus said. Blessed are you people. Uh, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and lie about you. Falsely, uh, how we fall, all kinds of false accusation, lying about you, in, uh, say all kinds of evil about you. Because of me, Jesus said. That is the same thing what happened with Torben and also when people going against us uh, who here in the, uh, when it comes to the last reformation. But Jesus said we should rejoice. And that is not only for us in the last reformation. Every one of us who are willing to follow Jesus will experience persecution. It's not about the last reformation. It all comes down to Jesus. When we obey Him and do His will, persecution will come. We don't chase after persecution. We just focus on the kingdom of God and do His will, and persecution will follow. As, life, as Jesus said that, that I came to give you life, life in abundance, He also says along together with persecution. But be blessed and rejoice. He said rejoice and be glad because you're great, you're great, great is your reward in heaven. The Bible says that everyone who wants to live a godly life will be persecuted. But also what Jesus said in Luke chapter 6, verse 26, he says here, Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you, good of you, for that is how their ancestor treated the false prophets. In a way, if people start to, if you are a Christian, born again Christian, and they just have been speaking well of you your whole life, you don't have never ever experienced any uh, attacks, anything, uh, rejection or ops, uh, oppositions or any kinds of persecution, but just speaking well of you, then maybe something is wrong. 
maybe something is wrong. Why? Because yes, there will always be people who will be grateful for you when you preach the gospel. But there are also those people who will hate you because you preach the truth. Who will hate you because you live out the truth. And what is the sign that we are often in the right way? What is the sign often is when people start to persecute you, speak falsely against you, all kinds of evil. And that's why he says, but if you don't experience that, but you experience that everyone speaks all the time good about you, then maybe it is because you are in the wrong place or do the wrong thing. Because Jesus said, woe to you when everyone speaks well of you, speaks good, good of you, for that is how the ancestor treated the false prophets. We know, we all should know, not only we, but all of you, if you experience attacks, persecutions, oppositions, as many of us experience, then we should know that it is highly chance that it's a sign that we are doing the right thing. And that is what we also believe, what is all, everything's what happened right now with Torben. It all comes down because for the sake of the gospel. So guys, this is what just I want to share with you. But let's already now go straight into Torben's update. And the headline says this. They said no to a bomb. My lawyers are shocked. God, what are you doing? I am not obese. Special update from Torben Sondergaard, Baker's County Detention Center, Day 37. Read more updates here. And Torben says here. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that God is working in you all and that you are walking in what He has prepared for you to walk in. He wants us all to be transformed by the power of the gospel and to walk in obedience to the call we have received from our Lord Jesus Christ. Yesterday was really hard for all of us. Our faith is truly being tested, and I will be honest and say it is not easy. It hurts, and there is something in us that just wants to throw everything away and make it stop. This is now 37 days since I got detained. I was told that they have heard that I was smuggling weapons and that I was a national threat. Since then, I've been told that there is no case against me for smuggling weapons. So all of that is gone but i'm still here i'm still a national threat and i can just say it is crazy what is happening here we were told last week that there was a really good chance that i could come out on a bond but it didn't happen then we heard that it would probably happen this week as we have sent in all our papers and we have a really good case and we were really hoping and believing that they would let me out on a bond, but it did not happen. Instead, they told us that they will not let us get a bond, and my lawyer was shocked. He was surprised and shocked. It was almost like they did not even look at my case. We sent in a lot of good proof that I am a good candidate to be released on a bond, but no. I got rejected. They rejected it right away. So somehow they think I am still too dangerous to let out there. But I don't understand. Jesus has truly transformed my life when I gave everything to him 27 years ago. I haven't been drinking or smoking in over 20 years. I have never taken drugs. I have never robbed anyone. I have not been in a fight since I gave my life to Jesus at 18 years old. I pay my taxes. I keep the laws according to what I know. There's always something we don't know about, but I'm always trying my best because I truly fear God. And I could not have said it better than what Paul says here. I do my best always to have a clean conscience before God and people. And that is in Acts chapter 24, verse 16. Yes, this is what I've been trying to do for years. I try always to do my best to have a clean conscience, first before God and then before man. But the people who got my papers rejected it right away, like they had already made up their mind that there should be no bond for me, that I am a danger and therefore I should not come out now. 
Yes, it did not only come as a shock and surprise for my lawyer, but especially for us. And especially for me, after I've been locked in here for over a month, hearing other people coming out on a bond. God, what is happening here? God, what are you doing? I asked God and myself this. Is God not faithful? Will he leave me here? But of course, God is faithful. We just don't know what is happening right now. This place is so different from my normal life. Married 25 years, and the last three and a half years after we came to America, I've only been away from my wife and girls for two or three days. I am very social, talking with a lot of people, daily spending a lot of time with my brothers and sisters in the Lord, sharing the word, but not here. See my update, Apollos left me. And there's a link on the description with this video. And Torben continued to say here, out there I run, I run often, I hike, I bike, and I love nature. But since I got detained, I have not touched grass or touched a tree or done the things I'm normally doing out there. I do videos to all of you out there, but not here. No iPhone, no internet, no Facebook, no signal, no YouTube. This is truly a different world, but I'm here and they will not let me out because they think I am a danger and a national threat and this is what I don't understand. Sorry if I somehow inform you wrong about the details, but I don't have all the details and it's also truly difficult for me to know everything that's going on here. And of course, there are also a few things I cannot tell you and I don't know everybody who is reading this update either. But just to come with an example of how crazy this world is for me. Few weeks ago, I heard my name over the loudspeaker. I came to the door and there was an officer or an agent and he gave me some paper. The headline on the paper said, Notice of Custody Determination. And two lines later it says, You have been identified as having one or more of the risk factors identified by the district court as placing you at heightened risk of severe illness and death upon contracting COVID-19 virus. And then there were three risk factors listed that could be checkmarked. One, over 55 years old? No. Two, pregnant? No. But the last one had a checkmark. Three, has a chronic care condition as confirmed by a medical professional, condition obesity. And then further down, it says, based on this review, a decision has made to maintain custody. So, according to these papers he gave me, I've been examined by a medical professional and they have looked at my condition and said that I am obese. I can say to all of you out there that this is a direct lie. No professional would ever say that I am obese. Even the officer who gave me the paper told me a little about it and said, it says you are obese. And then he just looked at me and said, you are not obese. Then he gave me the papers and left. Yes, it did not take many seconds for him to look at me and see that I was not obese. And I'm sure that those people who made this paper had never met me in, pers in person. But here it is in black and white that I am obese and that I am in danger of being let out. Yes, this is just crazy. And it will always, of course, be healthier for me to come out than to be locked in here. I'll already start to feel it in my body, being locked in here. I cannot run, I cannot hike, I cannot bike like out there. I started to do some exercise in my cell, try to keep my body going because I feel it in my body and I wake up every morning with pains in my knees. So what a life we are living. What now? I can just say that we need to see God move or I will be here for a longer time. Next week, we will talk with a judge and get a day for my asylum case, which can be several weeks out. But somehow I believe that something will happen supernaturally, that this will not happen in a natural way. God will show his power. 
It almost reminds me of Moses in Egypt, how Moses came to Pharaoh and said, let my people go. But we read that Pharaoh hardened his heart and said, no. Later, God hardened Pharaoh's heart because God wanted to show his power. It also reminds me of Gideon who had 22,000 men, but God cut it down to 300. Why? Because God didn't want people to say that the war was won by their own strength. Yes, this is where we are now. It is up to God now, but it has actually always been up to God. We just are afraid to let go. But yesterday, it was like all hope for me of coming out now in a natural way disappeared. So my question is, as it was written in the headline, God, what are you doing? Please keep praying for us, especially in these days where our faith really is being tested. We will in a few days share more about this and how God in former times has tested us, but how he has been faithful every time, which we really need to hold on to that he also will this time. Please pray that God will open a door for me to be released or turn the hearts of those people who said no or send somebody higher up to help us. I don't know what, but just that God will open a door so I can come out and to be with my family and you all out there. Pray that God will use this to show his power and that his name will be glorified by this. Thank you all for your prayers and support. And then I encourage you all out there to stay strong and keep preaching the good news of the gospel. God is doing so many beautiful things out there, like a video my friend Kim Nielsen has just done. I really want to share this video with all of you out there. This is the life he has for all of us. Are you on a cruise ship just having fellowship? Or are you on a warship having discipleship? Yes, these were the words God spoke to Kim, and he left the cruise ship and is now seeing many fruits. See the video with Kim here and say yes to the call God has given you. And there's a link with the video of Kim on the description with this video. And Torben says here in the end, God bless you all out there and thank you all for your prayers and support. Torben Sundergaard, disciple of Jesus Christ, now and forever.